I'm uh, converting the fan controller in this Monaco Dynasty from an electronic controller, which is this guy here, which has failed, to a wax valve, which you know, looks like this. The reason being is this is analog, old, reliable. Um, as most of you know, these electronic controllers, they come as a, a whole unit. I'm not sure which has failed on that, whether it's the solenoid or the little brain box. But it comes in as an assembly, and it's about $1,200. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend $1,200 on something that could potentially fail um, within a couple of years. Because I've read on forums where people have replaced these things up to two or three times on their coaches and I'm not made of money so we're going old school that's the hydraulic line laying here I just have it kind of laying there out of the way but I've already pulled it because what I'm going to do is put it here I'm going to cut a little bit of that excess off and put the the wax valve here on that standpipe coming out of the thermostat um, that would probably be the easiest to do because I can take this standpipe off and take it into the garage and do the work. Um, I would have liked to have put it here where this pipe starts, but this pipe is probably about five feet long. It runs all the way up to the front of the radiator, and it has, of course, it has another one of these hose couplings to the radiator. But, well, you, I guess you can't see it with the camera, but it's really, really hard to get to. The problem, if you if you don't know, when these controllers fail, they will fail in the in a closed position, which makes the fan run full throttle all the time. And uh, that's kind of hard on things. Um, not only that, in the winter time, the engine can never really come up to temperature because it's it's blowing so hard, um, and it robs horsepower. I've read online that it can rob anywhere from 50 to 60 horsepower, and I think that's true because there are certain hills around here that I can pull when the fan was working right, I could pull them at the speed limit, but um, when it's running full bore, I might lose 30 mile an hour up them hills, and that's, that's not good. So, <clears throat> so we're going to use this guy. Now, every coach is different. This is a Monaco Dynasty Diamond 4. It's a 2005 model. Um, these hydraulic fitting line is going to be is bigger on this coach. I know some coaches they're exactly the same size. Some, you know, every coach is a snowflake it seems like. Um, but this one, the fitting on the end of this hose is, is a is a JIC6, and the fitting on the end of this hose is a JIC4, and they're both female, of course. Now, the wax valve uses an O-ring port, and it's kind of an oddball size. The, the, pressure, the pressure side is the top, which is the in. On this, that is a, or that's a five, that's a J5 size, and this is a J4. So, I had, of course, I got a, had to shop around for fittings. Um, I found a place in Nebraska that had all the fittings I needed, so I just ordered from them. I'll put a link to their shop uh, in, the, in the description. So, um, one other thing, this this wax valve, I bought this one on eBay. Um, I found another place that sold the exact same thing for like $30, but I'm not sure if that was legit. You know, sometimes you, you Google search something and it pulls up some weird obtuse site. You know, you're not sure what it is. So, I just went ahead and spent the money and, and bought this off eBay. Now, it did not come with an O-ring. I think it's supposed to, but this one didn't. Um, but that's not a huge deal. O-rings are cheap. Um, in fact, what I did on this one, I've got my fittings that I bought laying here. I bought a plug. Here's a plug. This is, an, uh, this is a male ORB. Uh, the same size as this male ORB, and all I did was I just I just stole the O-ring off that and put on there. That was actually cheaper than ordering an O-ring because they had a minimum order for O-rings. Um, so yeah, whatever. 
plus this plug will come in handy later uh, for this. This is going to be what I put on the uh, on the stamp pipe. It's not a weld bung. This is a an ORB. Um, let me see if I, I don't know if you can see that or not. Sorry, I'm not the best videographer here, but um, this will screw onto the bottom of that. This is a pipe thinning, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to use a grinder and make a saddle out of this. Basically, I'm going to make my own weld bung because it is a lot, it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying a weld bung. Some of you may laugh at that, but this was, uh, I don't remember the exact price on this. It was only like a couple dollars, right? Most hydraulic stores don't sell weld bungs in an ORB, you know. So I thought, well, I'll just make one. No big deal, because I want to weld it myself. Um, I'll make a saddle out of that, and I'll weld it. And I'm not going to weld it like that. I'm going to, I'll grind it in a way that I can just set it so it'll still sit upright. And maybe, we'll see once I get it off, how it all right, so I got the pipe off, thermostat. I did have to take the uh, engine lift, the lifting eye off, which is no big deal, three bolts. That set kind of right there. It was kind of in the way of everything, so it makes it a lot easier. And then all the way. Um, stand pipe, I'm gonna try and mount it Um, on the top, I trimmed up my hose a little bit. That's that's basically where it sits. Hard to see on camera. But I trimmed the hose up. I'm going to put the bung as close to that hose as I possibly can, close to the top of the pipe. Um, anyway, so now we get to do the fun part. So I used a step bit to drill the hole, which worked really well. Uh, here's what the uh, saddle looks like, the homemade saddle. came out pretty good. Um, it fits pretty good up there. It's not perfectly straight up and down, but good enough for me. Here's what the uh, wax valve looks like inside the uh, saddle, and that's protruding pretty well. Um, the probe, the, the copper part of that probe needs to be fully down into the, the flow of the coolant, which it is. So it's looks like I got it just right there. It's ready to weld up. So that's the next step. Got it welded up. The plug came in handy. Now let's put it back together, eh? Alright, got it back together. Before I button it completely up, I'm going to start it and make sure there's no leaks. Got rear start. A couple seconds. Let's go. <laughs> So I've waited another 10 minutes at fast idle with the block heat on and we've got it up to 176 degrees and it's pretty much holding steady there. Uh, I went back and checked and the fan is just kind of sort of wanting to start to move so the wax valve is working but I don't think I'm going to get the engine any warmer than this. But the nice thing is that wax valve is adjustable. Um, there's a plug on the top. If you take that plug out, not with the engine running, by the way, do not take that plug out with the engine running. You will get sprayed with hydraulic fluid. 
um, take that plug out with an Allen wrench and underneath that plug is a set screw which is also an Allen head. Um, you can screw that all the way down to the seat and back it off four and a half turns and that is supposed to be 190 degrees and that's where I've set it. And I think what that means is um, when that wax valve is 190 degrees it's fully closed meaning the fan will be full on. One other thing that I did not do is the orifice in line. Um, I believe, uh, or rather reading in the forums, it looks like maybe a 19 thousandths orifice would be good. What that does is it keeps the, it makes the fan run all the time, but at a low RPM. Uh, so even when the engine's cold, the fan will still run at about, I don't know, I think 600 RPM or something like that. And, and what that is for is the uh, air conditioning condenser is sandwiched in that radiator, um, and it needs airflow when the AC is on. So um, I'm going to deal with that when summer comes around. I don't run.